Hi students, today we're going to go over Unit 2, Module 3, Session 5, Fraction, Addition, and Subtraction Story Problems. Number 1 says find the sum or the difference for each pair of numbers. Show all your work. A, we see 5 fourteenths plus 4 fifths. And so here we know when we add and subtract fractions, we need to find the common denominator. We need the denominators to match. So one way we can do that is in using a ratio table. And so if we have 5 fourteenths and we have 4 fifths, we're trying to think what can we have both the denominators equal. And so we're thinking of the multiples of 5 and we're thinking of the multiples of 14. <clears throat> so we have 14. So we have, again, 14, 28, 42, 56, and 70. We're just counting up by 14. And so thinking of those numbers, the only one that works with 5, the only one that's a multiple of 5, is 70. So we're going to change the denominator to 70. And so then we think, what did I multiply by 14 to get to 70? And I multiplied by 5. And so I'm going to want to do the same to the top. 5 times 5 is 25. And then here, to get to 70, what am I going to multiply by? I'm multiplying by 14. And so I'm going to want to do the same to the, to the top. So 4 times 14, I know 4 times 4 is 16, so that'd be 56, I believe. And so now our new problem is 25 seventieths plus 56 seventieths. And so we're adding 25 plus 56, so we have 11, 5, 6, 7, 81 seventieths, that works. Or you can also say that that equals one whole and 11 seventieths. One whole and 11 seventieths. So either of those answers work. Let's look at B. It says 7 ninths minus 4 sevenths. So again, we're thinking of the multiples of 9 and the multiples of 7, <clears throat> seeing which ones match up. And when I do that work, I know that it's going to be 63. So you can do the work like here on a ratio table like I just showed you, or you can also say, okay, I want my denominators to be 63. And so what am I multiplying here? When I'm multiplying the nine by to get to 63, it's times seven. And so I'm going to want to say seven times seven, which is 49. And then here on the other one, I'm, what am I multiplying seven by to get to 63? Right, times 9. And so here the numerator, you're going to want to say 4 times 9. Because whatever you do to the bottom, to the denominator, you also need to do to the top. So 4 times 9 is 36. And so now we have 49 minus 36. What does that equal? And we see that it equals 13. 36 is our answer. I said 36, I meant 63. 1363 or 63rds is our answer. Let's look at C. 1 and 7 fifteenths plus 3 ninths. And so again, we're thinking of the multiples of 15 and 9. So we have 15, 30, 45. So it looks like our denominators are going to be 45. And so we're going to have 1 and something 45ths plus something 45ths. Oops, I said 9, wrote 9, but I meant 45ths. <clears throat> so what are we multiplying 15 by to get to 45? Again, we count by 15s. 15, 30, 45. So we're multiplying times 3. So 15 times 3. So that means we're going to multiply the top times 3. So 7 times 3 is 21. And then we have 9. What are we multiplying 9 by? 9 times what equals 45? That's right. 9 times 5 equals 45. So we're multiplying the numerator times 5. Because we multiplied the denominator by 5 to get to 45. So 3 times 5 is 15. So now we have 1 and 21 45ths plus 15 45ths. So 21 plus 15 is... That's right. 36, 36 45ths, 1 and 36 45ths 
is the correct answer, or you can also reduce the fraction to be 1 and 4 fifths. Okay, 1 and 4 fifths. Let's look at D. D, we have 2 and 1 third minus 1 and 3 fifths. So we're thinking of the multiples of 3 and the multiples of 5. So we're counting by 3s. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Oh, 15 is a multiple of 5, so that's going to be our new denominators. So we have 2 and something fifteenths minus 1 and something fifteenths. And so again, we're thinking, what do we multiply by 3 to get to 15? We multiply it by 5, so 1 times 5 is 5. And here, what should we multiply 5 by in this denominator to get to 15? We multiply by 3. So what are we going to multiply the numerator by? That's right, times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. Do we change the whole numbers here? No, because it's still two holes. No matter how what the fraction is here, it's still going to be two holes. Okay, so 5 fifteenths is just equivalent to 1 third. We're just changing the denominator, changing this not changing the size, because it's still the same size, right? 5 fifteenths and 1 third, those are equivalent. We're changing the number of pieces, I guess you would, in the, in the whole. So now 2 and 5 fifteenths minus 1 and 9 fifteenths. Oh, so this one's a little tricky here, right? Because I cannot take away 9 fifteenths from 5 fifteenths. So what do I need to do here? That's right, I need to take away one of those holes and make it into 15 And so we think, how many 15 are in one hole? That's right, 15 15 is in one hole. So we're going to take this, take a, take a hole from here, change that to one hole, and then we're going to add that 15 15 we just took from here into here. So 15 15 plus 5 15 is 20 15 So again, we're going to have now, this is, we're going to change it to 1 and 20 15 minus 1 and 9 15 and what does that equal? 1 minus 1 is 0. 20 minus 9 is 11. So our answer is 11 fifteenths. Number 2. George and his dad made some snack mix for their camping trip. To make it, they used 2 cups of mini pretzels, 3 fourths cup of peanuts, and 2 thirds cup of chocolate chips. How many cups of snack mix did they have when they were finished? Show all your work. So it seems like we're going to add here. So we have 2 cups of mini pretzels, 3 four cups of peanuts, and 2 thirds cups of chips. And the question's asking us, how many cups did they have when they were finished? So basically, how many cups did they have in all? So we're going to take two, oops, right into, the, right into that highlighter again, two plus three-fourths plus two-thirds. So really, we just need to add the three-fourths and the two-thirds, and we'll just add in that two holes. So we're going to change those denominators to be twelfths. So I'm thinking 4 times what equals 12? I multiplied that by 3, so you multiply this by 3, which would be 9. I multiplied this by 4, multiplied the 3 times 4 to get 12. And now I need to multiply the 2 times 4 and 8. And so now my new problem rewritten with common denominators is 2 plus 9 twelfths plus 8 twelfths. And what does that equal? 2 and 17 twelfths. But as we see, that's an improper fraction, so we can make it proper by changing that to be 3 and 5 twelfths. So I will accept either answer, but of course I prefer it when you change it to a not an improper fraction, but a proper fraction. One where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Let's continue to the next page. Number three says, Lisa drank 7 16 of a bottle of water during the soccer game. Julianne drank two-thirds of the water in the bottle that was the same size as Lisa's. Who drank more water and by exactly how much? Show all your work. So let's look here. Lisa drank 7 16 Oops. Now I wanted the highlighter and it didn't. Lisa drank 7 16 of the bottle of water. Juliana drank two-thirds of the water in the bottle. Who drank more water? So really what we're trying to do here is we're finding the difference. And so we're going to find the difference between 7 16 and 2 thirds. We're going to find the difference between 7 16 and 2 thirds. So first we want to make, change it into, that's right, into common denominators. 
So, hmm, thinking of the multiples of 16, it would be 16, 32, and 48. And which of those is the multiple of 3? 48. So I'm going to change my denominator to be 48. And so six, 16 times 3 equals 48. So what do I need to multiply the 7 by? That's right, times 3. So 7 times 3 is 21. And then looking here, 3 times what equals 48? It's 16. 3 times 16 is 48. So 2 times 16 is 32. And so now we need to find the difference between 21 48 and 32 48. So we're going to set up a subtraction problem. So we have 32 48 minus 21 48 equals 32 minus 21 is 11 48. And so who drank more? That's the difference. Someone drank 11 48 more. And who was it? Well, as you see, this one's larger. So who drank two thirds? It was Julianne. So the answer would be Julianne drank 11 48 of the bottle of water more than Lisa. One more time. Julianne drank two, th excuse me, Julianne drank 11 48 more of the water bottle than Lisa. Last, not last one challenge. Austin went to the science museum. He was there for two hours. He spent three-fifths of his time doing experiments. Then he spent one-third of his time at the water station. Finally, he spent the rest of his time looking at skeletons. How long did Austin spend looking at the skeletons? Show all your work and express your answer as a number of minutes and as a fraction of an hour. So let's extract some of our information here. We see that he was at the science museum for two hours. Three-fifths of his time, he was doing experiments. One third of his time, he's at the water station. The rest of his time, looking at skeletons. And so the question is, how long did Austin spend looking at the skeletons? And it's important that I'm going to express my answer in number of minutes and as a fraction of an hour. So here, what we're thinking is three fifths of his time between experiments. Now remember, is it three fifths of one hour? It's three-fifths of his total time, and so it's three-fifths of two hours. That's important to remember there. So we're going to solve what is three-fifths of two hours. And so here what I can think is I know that one-fifth of one hour equals 12 minutes. Therefore, one-fifth of two hours will be 24 minutes. And then 3 fifths of 2 hours would be 3 times 24. So what is 3 times 24? Well, so I can solve that out. 24 times 3, 6, 72 minutes. So 3 fifths of 2 hours is 20, 72 minutes. And then what else did he spend his time doing? He spent his time doing, at, he was spent his time at the water station, one third of his time. So again, it's one third of two hours. So what's one third of two hours? So I know that one third of one hour equals, let's see, 60 divided by three is 20 minutes. So one third of one hour is 20 minutes. Therefore, one-third of two hours is 40 minutes. And so if he spent 72 minutes at the uh, doing experiments and 40 minutes at the water station, what's 72 plus 40? So we're going to take that right now. 72 plus 40 is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 112 minutes combined during experiments and at the water station. Out of how many, how much time total? Two hours. And two hours is how many minutes? 120 minutes. So now we're going to take 120 minutes and we're going to subtract that 112 minutes he spent at those activities. And we see that we get eight 
minutes remaining. And so the question is, how long did Austin spend looking at skeletons? The answer is eight minutes. Eight minutes he spent looking at the skeletons. And express your answer in number of minutes and as a fraction of an hour. So it would be eight minutes. And what is that as a fraction of an hour? Eight sixtieths. Eight sixtieths, because eight minutes out of 60 minutes total. So there's your answer for the challenge problem.